chose to pursue self-realization and why, is it, why do you recommend that others pursue the same thing? <clears throat> it began when I was studying playwriting at Dock Street Theatre. I had been seeking truth really all my life. And from the age of 13, I began seeking it more consciously in specific paths, politics, science, wanted to become astronomer, through writing, through music, through different fields. And I found that none of them gave me what I was looking for. And the first thing I understood was that science cannot give me what I'm looking for because it only can feed my reason, but it can't feed my heart. And I came soon to recognize that truth has to be something you identify with joy. What's the use of an abstract truth, whether the universe has 100 billion galaxies or 200 billion galaxies, means absolutely nothing to you and me. But if we feel joy in that, that's the truth of it. Not the fact, but the joy. And so more and more I tried to find that truth which would lead me to joy. I hadn't been really interested in church because I felt that they didn't know what they were talking about. And I remember my mother was a faithful churchgoer, and I went with her out of obedience. But one day at the age of 16, I remember saying to my mother, I'm not going to church with you anymore. And she wept. When she first conceived me, she felt that this first child I give to God. And all through her pregnancy, she had felt very blissful. And she uh, kept thinking, this first child I give to God. And, when she found out at the age of 16 I wouldn't even go to church with her anymore, it was a heavy blow to her. And she wept. And she said, it's so painful to know that my own child is going to hell. And I could not change just for her sake. I had to be sincere. Then she came back to me a few days later and she said she'd been reading a book in which um, she found that rejecting God is the first step to really accepting him on a, different, on a deeper level. And then she felt relieved, and I said, you've understood. So that was laid to rest for a while. But I found that all my thinking led me back to the thought of, what is God? He can't be a policeman up there. He can't be somebody who's sitting around waiting for us to make a mistake so he can clap us into hell for eternity. He can't be vengeful or vindictive. There has to be something more about it. And I remember I took this long walk out into the night, and I thought, what can God be if he exists? And I realized that, first of all, he has to be consciousness. Where would I get this ability to question if it weren't for that truth? <clears throat> then if he is consciousness, then my ability to think derives from that uh, consciousness. Therefore, I must be an expression of his consciousness. Therefore, the duty of my being is to be more aware of that consciousness and less aware of my separateness from that consciousness. And so I resolved that night that I would seek God as my own self and that I would uh, become more and more in tune with him. I didn't know such terms as self-realization or anything like that. This is how I defined it, and it was the definition that is in the Vedanta philosophy, but I didn't know anything about that. It simply made absolute sense to me, and I remember coming back that same evening, and I was rooming with four other young men who were in the same acting group there, and I was very overwhelmed by the depth of these thoughts. and. They were just sitting around the kitchen table laughing, and I was just sort of too dazed to enter into it. And they were laughing at me, thinking, what's wrong with him? But I, I, it, was a, it was a turning point in my life. And from then on, I decided I would seek God. But I didn't know what God was. <clears throat> and so the first thing I tried to do was um, read the Bible. I gave up on the begats. I just bogged down. So-and-so begat so-and-so, and he died. It just seemed like nonsense to me. What does it matter how long those people lived all those hundreds and thousands of years ago? 
And then my mother had a, a book on her shelf. Uh, this was when I was helping to pack her to be ready to go to uh, Cairo to join my father. And uh, it was called A Short World Bible. And it had excerpts from the different religions. And I read the different ones, and they, some of them were beautiful, some of them were sort of um, fantastic. But when I read the Indian one, it just absolutely rang true. First of all, it spoke of God as infinite. Not a man with a long white beard or something, but an infinite consciousness. That made sense. Secondly, it said that we must experience God. It's not enough to believe. That made absolute sense to me. As a science, science student, which I had been, I thought, well, that rings true. You have to experiment to know if a truth is really true or if it's just a fancy. So I liked that. And then it said that you can experience God, and I thought, well, that's for me. And uh, it was just a short few pages, a little excerpt from the Gospel of Ramakrishna, a few excerpts from the Vedas, but it didn't speak of one person founding the religion, which all the other religions did, that appealed to me, that truth is infinite. You can't bind it up in one person. And uh, with that, I, um, it had said in that book that you must, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, a little excerpt, if you would know me, go off to a solitary place and meditate on me. Well, I'd always had this yearning to be a hermit from childhood, so this rang true for me. And I went upstate New York to try to find a place where I could be alone. It was a disastrous pilgrimage, and I won't go into it now, except that it was all... Um, uh, it geared me toward autobiography of a yogi. By the time I found that book, I was desperate. And uh, so... Only after I read his book, I had been willing to give up everything just to find peace of mind and to find that finding God is bliss and love and absolute joy. This was just overwhelming to me. I read that book with between tears of joy and tears of greater joy. And uh, so that's the answer to your question. I really came to the understanding in a sense, in Charleston, in a deeper sense, when I met my guru.